Well, thanks for joining me once again. Today I'm having a look at the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650. Um, this bike is obviously it's coming in at the budget end of the scale. But the Royal Enfields and the Interceptors have a great following. I believe this is the same engine, it's the 650 engine. It is restricted so that it meets the A2 compliance for the, uh, the, the lower license. So I'm going to take it for a ride, see what we think. This one comes kitted out with the screen and the backrest. It looks like they're in preparation for having um, panniers and bits and pieces. It has a centre stand and a side stand. So we got over here some nice toggle switches actually, that looks nice. And that's Royal Enfield branding on the on the grips. So fuel gauge, speed gauge, miles, gear indicator, it's just clock over here. Nice and switch, I like these toggle switches, they're nice. High beam, low beam. Oh very good. Let's, let's give it a try, see what it's like. So obviously for the style of bike, this is great for a, um, a learner, someone looking to build their confidence. As I say, meets the A2 compliance. I believe with a bit of uh, fettling you can bring this up to around 60 horsepower. Changing exhaust and airbox and bits and pieces. So we're not expecting this to be the fastest bike in the world, not by any means. More of a comfortable plodder for a Sunday. Initial impressions, this has got a big comfy touring seat on it. Very nice too. I'd say uh, the foot pegs are medium forward, something like that. I am about 5'7". And um, yeah, comfortable. I don't think I'd want it to be too much smaller. These bikes have uh, become very popular, I think especially with the um, the older clientele, shall we say? It's um, meeting the sort of the retro market or the retro looks and everything, but with modern reliability. That's what most people want. You want to know when you take your bike out on a Sunday, you are going to get to where you were going in the first place. But you still have that nice retro style and old school sort of feel to the bike. Okay, that brake feels quite positive, no problem there. Engine at these low speeds feeling very smooth actually. A nice little noise from that parallel twin. And I know that you can um, buy things like SNS pipes and stuff for these. Or well, certainly you will be able to, I know you can with the interceptor. And you get a very pretty noise. So I'm going to try this one just up a short way up the dual carriageway, see what it's like at speed, see how this screen works, if it's got any uh, good wind deflection. Obviously there's no protection on these style of bikes on the cruiser for your legs. Well, hopefully that screen will keep the wind off the chest. But it's not obscenely big like some of the cruisers are getting now. So like now I can still squeeze through this traffic, no problem at all. If I had a huge victory or something, that might be a bit different. 
Right, that's important, if you, especially if you do a lot of city riding, you, you need to be able to get through the traffic and filter okay. Bike doesn't weigh a, a huge amount either, although it does feel very solid. It feels heavy actually in a, in a, a comforting sort of way. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall to pieces. I see when I went through the tunnel there, all the um, the dials and everything uh, backlit nicely. That was good. Well, that slipper clutch working nicely now, coming down through there. Very nice. twin will give a, a very nice satisfying noise once you've changed the airbox and uh, done the exhaust. But this is not a bike that's designed to be ridden hard, not by any means. So this the Meteor 650 carrying the same engine as the Interceptor. 650cc parallel twin it's a nice looking thing the bike comes in a lot of different color options there are a lot of different color options i believe there's only two different color options that come with this sort of touring pack already fitted with the seat and the screen um, center stand but you can buy the bike um, more of a strip down at a lower price without the touring seat and screen and backrest and you could spec it up you could add those things to the other color bikes so if you wanted the black bike you could buy the black one as the base model and then add on the bits that you want to but if you do add the, the whole works then um, yeah, I think it works out a little bit more expensive Chugging along at 40 miles an hour, fourth gear, very pleasant, very nice. Just need some sunshine. Enfield have been around for a long time as we all know these bikes now are, are made and are very popular in India and the thing about motorcycles in India is that they're designed for simplicity so that they can be um, maintained very easily everything needs to be very simple and they're not designed for speed because of the roads that they have so you know you don't get hugely powerful bikes from Royal Enfield not yet anyway, it would be really nice to see a, a big 650 twin in something like the Scram 411, that would be great. So we're just going to have a little look down this side road a minute and I'll uh, show you the bike. Okay, let's pop the bike here and we'll have a look around it. Look at this little toggle switch, this is great. Okay, so struggling to find the side stand. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Chain drive. As you can see, we've got the nice had a big seat there with the backrest fitted to this bike and the uh, nice large touring screen I was going along then at 70 mile an hour a little bit more no problem with wind deflection there the screen works well fair enough retro looking indicators flashing away there with a the retro 
um, wing mirrors. Nice bit of chrome on those. Look at the engine, it looks fantastic to be fair. That is a nice looking, nice looking thing. Although we can see it does need a fender extender, that's got very dirty very quickly. So longevity is a concern for these bikes, I think, especially at the, the price point that they're built at. But having said that, if you're getting a bike at half the price of the big brands and it lasts half the time, well, you can't really complain, can you? Well, the Royal Enfield Himalayans have been very popular and uh, people really use and abuse those. I say my own personal opinion, it just needs a little bit more power before it's usable here in the UK anyway. But there are signs in the build quality, some of these welds and things, of the budget price. But, you know, it costs seven grand for a brand new bike. So corners have to be cut somewhere, don't they? So let's start this bike up, let you have a little listen to it. Okay, so back on the Royal Enfield 650 Meteor. So my conclusion seems to be walking around this bike is that for the money, actually, it looks like very good value. I don't think you can really complain too much about its downfalls. I mean, sure, the finish could be better, but it could also be twice the price, couldn't it? But there's a, a machine to ride. This one feels very comfortable. I think this could be a very useful, practical bike. The throttle feels very smooth. But it's just little things so we can see like, these nuts coming through here, you know, they, they look like they've just been screwed through with out the real afterthought. They do a, a rubber cap on the back or, you know, shorter screws or something. Just little things like that just shows, you know, where, where costs have had to be cut. But actually, I think certainly, especially if you've just passed your test, you're on to your A2 license now. Um, you're restricted on the horsepower you can have. And to be honest, you probably don't want to be spending 15 grand on a bike. If you're still in your learning phase, you know, there, there is the risk to drop it or causing a problem. This bike sits at a good price that most people can afford. Certainly, if you're not on finance, I'm sure it works out very well provide you all the Sunday enjoyment you could re need really at real world speeds I'd definitely be interested to hear one of these if anybody's got one already and has done the modifications I'd definitely like to know your thoughts on it I'm told that you can up the horsepower to around 60 horsepower doing modifications to the airbox and the exhaust system and I know from the interceptor that that can be true. And um, the interceptor sounds fantastic. Oh, that twin with some SNS pipes or something, it's really nice. It's a 
ride. This thing's very smooth, very nice. If it didn't have Royal Enfield written all over it and the, you know, the sort of stigma of the, the cheaper bikes, you wouldn't know any different. I think you very soon forget about that when you're riding this every day. You've plenty more pound coins for the petrol tank. Speaking of which, I'm guessing this thing is pretty frugal on uh, fuel costs and running costs. Being a, a little 650 twin, insurance can't be very much on this. I think your overall running costs will be very affordable actually. Definitely a lot of plus points, a lot of appeal for this bike. So that's my thoughts on a first ride of the Royal Enfield Meteor 650. I think we'll see a few of these on the road over the next year or two. Hopefully they last well for their owners and uh, bring them many happy miles and smiles. But for now I'll be taking this demo bike back to uh, Chris at CMS Motorcycles in Exeter. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Chris, actually. Um, nice chap. Had a chat with him in the store. He showed me around some of the bikes that they got there available. And kindly let me take this Meteor 650 out. And I'm glad I did. Overall, a nice experience on this bike. So thanks for joining me on the road once more. I'm going to return this bike now to Chris at CMS Motorcycles in Exeter. Hope you enjoyed the review of the Meteor 650. Give us a like, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are if you've got one already. And uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button if you like motorcycle only content for this channel.